The next skill we're going to demonstrate now is moving a patient from the supine position up into a log roll and placing the board underneath. So the patient's in supine, if you notice her head and neck are at an angle, which can happen at any time, Brian is going to move the head and neck into neutral position and demonstrate that by controlling the head. Red Brian. So the head is brought back into neutral position, small amount of gentle pull on the neck and the head, realigning it, making sure that the patient is, if there's any complaints of pain, tenderness, electrical shock type things coming out of the head and neck, you stop in that position and you have to immobilize the patient in that position with the head misaligned. If Brian were, if the patient were unconscious and Brian were to feel any resistance, any locking or crepitus to the point where you couldn't move the head and neck, then you stop at that position and again immobilize the head in that misaligned position. Do not force the head and neck for any reason and for obvious implications and ramifications. So now we're going to log roll her up onto her side. I've taken note that her right arm here, or sorry, her left arm has been checked and placed upwards. There's no injury pattern there that I can see. And I've checked this arm, brought it over to the midline, so it's out of the way. And now we're going to log roll her up into her side. Two part procedure again, with Brian having control of the head and neck and calling on the cadence. On three, one, two, three. So these is pulled up into a sideline position. I can then reach over. The next skill we're going to demonstrate is how to immobilize a person to the long board. So the patient has been appropriately checked, placed on the long board, and we're going to immobilize her in a certain sequence. Remember, you must immobilize the patient uh, in a certain uh, order. And the first one we do is the torso, the upper body, torso, hips, head, feet and hands, or hands and feet, depending on what you want to finish up. But again, to recap, torso first, hips second, head third, and then the appendices, appendices later. And the idea behind that is to make sure that if she were to get nauseated at any point in this procedure, that the torso is secured, the massive body is secured, uh, and then her pelvis, we can still log roll her, and Brian can maintain C-spine control during that log roll, and yet her body is secured. If you were to immobilize the head first, and she were nauseated and we tried to turn her, in fact, her body would slide off, canting or impinging the neck and causing further damage, or potentially further damage. So what we're going to do now is demonstrate the proper mobilization technique using the quick straps and starting off with the torso. When you're using the belts around the patient, ensure that you hold on to the belts or making sure that you don't have the buckles flailing around over top of your patient. So always know where the buckles are and that you're in control of them. You do not want to see buckles moving around the patient's body or over your face. I then take the short end of the buckle and I'm going to attach it at approximately the level of the hip. And the reason I start with the short end of the buckle is this doesn't end up at the collar when I'm pressing over top. Also make note that any natural holes of the body from the lumbar spine, from under the knees, between the legs, has to be padded uh, with adequate padding using towels or whatever you have uh, to ensure that there's no uh, um, uh, pressure points in the body. Also of note, make sure that if the patient has just wearing a nightgown or pajamas or there's anything just, uh, or the patient's bare skin, that a pad or a blanket is placed on the spinal board prior to proper mobilization to prevent pressure sores or the cubit ulcers from forming. So we start at the torso, at the level of the hips, and then taking the strap, make sure it's straight, and then go over the shoulder and snap it in. My belt is straight. You can always push-pull the belt, never tug on the belt to tighten it, push-pull to feed it in order to tighten it up. I could put padding on the shoulder if I like at this point, if it was required, in this case it's not really warranted, and I snap that belt up. My second belt, and do the opposite, starting at the level of the hips again, short end of the buckle, Make sure my buckle is straight, I've got control of the buckle head, bring it up over the shoulder, and snap it in. Making sure now, the belt straight, push pull the buckle until that slack is taken up. The torso is now secured, and then going to do the hips, torso hips. I'm going to start at the level of the hips again, and this is actually at the same level as the other buckle. I'm going to come across 
across with the short end. Over the X, I'm going to make sure I have some padding on the groin because the belt buckles are going to be in the way. I then take the buckle underneath the opposing knee, so I go across and under, because we want to make a almost like a parachute harness or a um, a carry effect with the with the, the legs and the hips. I then latch on the opposite side and now feed my slack back, making sure my belt is straight. Push pull. until that buckle is snug. My loose ends are tied up in the center. I do exactly the opposite on this side. Short end of the buckle. And then go across to the opposing, sorry, the opposing leg, under the knee, and then back to here, which is at the level of the hip. Take the slack back. And again, push pull my belt and keep the churning straight until they're snug. Ends are wrapped up. So we have torso, hips, head next. And when we do the head, what you want to do now is make sure the box, you can use the box either in the flat or if you look, they're at an angle. If the person has dressings on his head or his ears, you can use the angle partition of the box. And in most cases, you're just going to use the flat part. What's important about this is actually putting the blocks against the shoulders at this level and then dropping the blocks down versus putting them just against the head. So to demonstrate, we place them against the head the shoulders and we slide the blocks down into position and I will push against the blocks and say to Brian now I've got the head in there. He can release and he can hold on to the blocks now, transition the power the head. So now he's got control, I can let go, and we put the straps on. For clarity, I've kept the collar off so you can see where the belt buckles go and how the chin piece actually fits. We start with the chin piece, and we place it under the chin, the collar would obviously be in place, and we can take it to any one of these D-rings on the side we want to bring, to apply tension to the, the, the next strap. But I want to start the center, go equal distance, and then I can apply, pull to the straps until they hold the chin, and chin cup, and therefore the cervical collar in place. Then do the forehead, same thing, we start at the center, and from the center, we bring it down, pick any D ring you want that applies pressure in a, in a diagonal manner to hold the head down. And I'll pick this one over here. So now that's in the center, I apply pressure on both sides, and now the head is secure. Torso, hips, head, hands, and feet. And just to do the arms here to show you first, I do not want you to apply at any time wrist restraints. For lack of a better term, don't tie the wrist again. What I want you to do is take a walk for that, run it under the elbow, run it under the other elbow, pull the cravat together and tie. And now we just pull this out. And now the patient, we've got little cuffs on each end of the elbows. And now the patient is conscious, can scratch her nose or move her arms, it doesn't feel constrained. Or she, if she's unconscious, the arms fall down and still doesn't impede moving the patient or putting on a stretcher when the arms fall. And the last part we're going to do is the legs. And place the board as close as I can underneath your body and making note that her head is lower than the actual block here. And there's a reason for that we'll demonstrate in a second. So right on your count, we'll go back. On three, one, two, three. And as we slowly put her onto her back, you'll notice that she's not on the board entirely at this point. And again, we have to facilitate moving her in a diagonal fashion up onto the board. So if you have more than one responder, we can then move her up onto the board on Brian's count. On three, one, two, three. 